Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, a place where we focus on the business side of art to help you attract more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creativity and financial freedom. I am your host, Andrea Earhart, and today I am celebrating hitting the milestone of 100,000 Instagram followers which is nuts. And this is mostly due to video and video creation of short form video and just all different kinds of tips and tricks that I have for you today. And but I just want to take a moment to celebrate that. And I want to go back really quick. So a couple people have asked me, how did you get 100,000 followers? Where did this come from? Like what? And my main tip and piece of advice is video. But I started on Instagram about six years ago. And I remember telling my now husband being like, I think Instagram is going to be the way that I can get more art customers. I think if I just reach a bunch of people, surely one of them is going to buy my canvas paintings, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. And so I YouTubed a bunch of different ways to grow my following on Instagram, and I got a bunch of ideas that way. And I listened to a ton of business podcasts and all the things, and I just knew in my heart that video was going to be the new thing. So if you think of back six, seven years ago, photos were it. Like you posted a photo on Facebook or you like tagged where you were on Facebook or posted a photo with a really bad filter on Instagram. You remember those in the very beginning when people like actually used filters and <laughs> that was it. You put a little caption to it and which was probably the hardest part, right? Thinking up a caption. Well, nowadays creating the video, I think is the hardest part, but Now with the invention of Instagram Reels, I think it's been out, what, two, three years now? It's been a while. So they copied TikTok, right? And it's just short form video. And I remember back in the day, (laughs) I wanting to be kind of like Bob Ross. I was like, okay, I'm going to start and do these painting videos. But first, I have to get over my fear of being in front of the camera. And it was a very, very, very real fear. Not even going live, just (laughs) setting up my camera and recording stuff. I wish I still had the footage and the video of all the mess ups (laughs) that I did back in the day, because it is absolutely nothing like it is now. And actually, I'm going to pull up my editor really quick. So my video editor in my phone, if you need a recommendation, it's InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T, InShot. It's a video editor. I think you have to pay for it. I think it's like 10 bucks, but then you have it forever. It's not a subscription and you get to keep it on your phone. So I'm pulling that up right now on my phone and it says I have 886 drafts in there because I save all of my videos as a draft just in case I want to go back and maybe edit it more later or whatnot. So 886 drafts in my InShot editor. And that's, I think I downloaded InShot probably about three years ago. And so that many videos in three, maybe four years time, it's a lot. So I've had a lot of practice and I've gotten a lot better. And from diving into this video method thing, I've, I have a lot of tricks and tips. And anytime I see someone else post a video, I, if it's kind of slow or if it kind of loses my interest, I always think in my mind, this is how I would edit it. I would have cut out this part. I would have not done an angle that like that. I would have done it like this. And I just, it's not necessarily like a judgy, like, oh, they're doing terrible. I just think of how I would change it. And if it were my own. And so today I'm going to share a lot of my editing tips as well, because I think that's a big, big part of it. (laughs) You know, the art is the main thing. And then recording video, right? But then how you edit it is how you keep someone's attention. And I think it's really, really important. So I added that in today. And so actually, present day, (laughs) I have this whole big thing printed out where it has a bunch of editing tips and video ideas and links and everything. And I have this all put together because I am about to go up to Branson 
and present for my friend Dion Woods, her Empowering Creativity Retreat. And I'm about to give a two and a half hour presentation, which is a, a long time for me to be up in front of a bunch of people, but I'm doing it. Nine months pregnant at the moment, could pop any time now, really. But I'm going to go waddle my way up there and in front of everybody, and I'm going to give a presentation, basically a painting demo, and then show them how to record video and record multiple different versions of the same thing in order to share on Instagram reels. And so I'm going to give them this handout that I have in front of me, the one I'm going to explain to you with the editing tips and all that. But if you want that handout, this handout that it has links on it, so exact links to the exact video idea examples that I'm talking about, you can just go to artistacademy.co slash video. That's artistacademy.co slash video, or there's a link here in the podcast. You can go there and you can download this printout. And like I said, it has direct links on it and it just, it has everything compiled, written down. And I think it's a great thing to just have around to where if you are not sure what to post or not, sure, you know, and half of the ideas I'm about to tell you are ones that you can do afterwards. Like they're ones that you don't even need to paint throughout and make, make video and have it be like this big production. It's like, oh, you're, you're finished with the painting. How do I make a cool reel? to present it and get, you know, more followers so that, so that they buy my art and my followers account grows and all the things. I have a lot of examples of just how to present yourself. And sorry, I'm nine months pregnant. So like, so breathing is kind of hard at the moment. I keep taking like big breaths. Anyway, go download that artistacademy.co slash video and or just do the link here in the podcast. I think it'll really help you just to visually see exactly what I'm about to explain. Okay. Anyway, back in the day, video was very hard. I would get hives when I went on live video <laughs> it, it several times. It took me several, several podcast interviews doing the live video thing, interviewing other people to where I would get on camera and the hives would just not be there anymore. It's been a very, very long road. and But now I can just... I know exactly what to do. Anyway, let's just get to it. But I just wanted to really reinforce that video was not easy for me at first. And now it is. And I want to help it be a lot easier with you. And it comes with practice. Like I said, over 800 drafts in my InShot editor. But I think some of these tips will help you bypass a lot of that practice and get good faster than I did. Okay. So first things first, good lighting and camera angles are non-negotiable, okay? Good lighting and camera angles are non-negotiable. So before we get into the video ideas, you have to learn how to set up your camera. Obviously, I can't show you this. I'm, I'm about to do a demo up in Branson so I can actually physically show them. And I have videos in the academy as well where I physically show, but I'm going to do my best to just describe because... I see people <laughs> posting videos of their art where they're like their hand is in focus and then their <laughs> painting is not, or the camera angle is way backed up to where, you know, they have a small canvas and you can see them and you can see that they're painting something, but you can't really tell exactly what it is because you can see the whole rest of the room, but not the painting. So my first tip with the camera angle is you and your art should take up 90% of the screen if it's a mural or more than 50% if it's a canvas. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what else is going on. And <laughs> you know, has anybody ever had you know someone take a photo of them with their spouse or friend or whatever? You like you stop someone on the street, like, hey, can you please take a photo of, of us? And every time I cringe because I know what's gonna happen over 50% of the time, they are like, sure, they'll point the camera, they'll cut off our knees, and then they'll have a bunch of sky in the photo. Or they will like zoom in for some reason, or it's just the majority of people don't understand what makes up a good format for a photo. And it's the same thing for a video. It's getting what's most important in the shot, like the sky or having a ton of ground in the shot does not matter at all. It should never be there. <laughs> like You should have your art as the center and then you in it if you want you in it, if it's a good hair day or whatnot. Um, but those to be the two things. And everything else is just filler and can be cut out. 
And I would say cut out as much as you can. Sometimes if I have my Instagram husband doing some video for me and he's kind of a little off, I'll actually cut the angle in on my phone so that it all of the trees that he has on the right side that are also in there, I just cut those out. So big, big thing. And then another thing, don't block the view. So if you set your camera up to do, say, a time lapse or whatnot, and you have it straight on to your painting, I often don't recommend having a camera like your phone set up that's straight on to the painting. Have it just a little bit to the side. And it makes a big difference because I personally, I like that angle a lot better than just seeing the back of my head. And that way we're not blocking it. And you get both in there. You, I can get myself in there and I can get the canvas in there or the mural. But I also, one tip when I'm doing murals and I'm doing lettering or anything with a straight line or a circle or whatnot, actually offsetting the camera so they can't see if I'm doing a slightly imperfect job helps me because if somebody looks, if you're especially if you're a beginner letterer and it might not be super straight or whatever, like just offsetting it to the side, it messes up our view system. We don't have that automatic leveler in our brain anymore because things are kind of twisted, right? It's off to the side. So they can't see if you're messing up, basically. So it's basically doing yourself a favor and <laughs> putting it slightly to the side. It just helps all around. Another tip with camera angles, switch up camera angles as often as you can. And so shoot a few seconds close up, shoot a few seconds maybe slightly further away, do some from the left, do some from the right, over your shoulder, directly in front of you, all the things. And you're gonna figure out what camera angle that you look best in in the video plus your art plus you're gonna have a lot lot to choose from as well so just kind of play with it that that's my biggest recommendation see what looks best for you and then also challenge yourself every time I do a shot I'm like okay how can this be better? Can it be cropped? Would it have been better if it was slightly farther away? Would it have been better if there was some movement in there? Or am I trying to hold my phone super straight? Um, how can I make this shot slightly better? And a lot of that is typically with lighting. So how can you make your video better? Lighting. Natural light is best. Or adding artificial light or a ring light, that is second best. And then if adding light is not possible, then, you know, which actually often happens quite a bit with murals, then I'll go in and I'll edit it in InShot and just make it slightly brighter. I will turn up the brightness just a little bit. And then since it typically, when you do that, it typically kind of fades out the rest of the colors a little bit, I'll actually bump up the contrast just a little bit too. And really, that's it. So making it lighter and then making it a little bit more contrasted, and that typically fixes everything. And that's really all the editing I do because I have the iPhone 12, so the picture on it is pretty good. And if we have any kind of lighting in the room, the, the iPhone will really do its job and pick it up, but sometimes it needs a little bit of help. But if there is any way that you can pull your canvas or whatnot in front of a natural light source, that is absolutely best. Second best, ring light, and then third best is using editing. But use your tools before you resort to just the editing because it really does make a difference. Okay, so let's get to the video ideas. If you have downloaded the sheet, we have a list of video ideas and it starts with a simple time lapse. So time lapse is how I started making video in the very beginning. I just started setting up a time lapse for basically the entire time I was painting and posting those to Facebook and I would post those minute long time lapses of me creating the art because I thought it was so cool. And back then our attention spans on Facebook would sometimes people would watch like the entire thing that is long gone people are not going to watch a one minute video of you painting something from fast pace anymore it's not happening and I remember back in the day my dad gently nudging me and saying you know can you shorten that like my dad is retired like he has nothing better to do like just watch my full video dad I remember thinking but then I was like wait he's right I there's no reason for this to be a minute long, maybe I'll cut it down to like 20 seconds. And now a time lapse is cut down to like seven seconds at the most. That's how much our attention spans have gone 
way shallower. And so anyway, a time lapse. But the key to these are big movements covering a large area. So if you can set up your time lapse in the very, very start and have you just blocking in things, that's good. And then you can take it down and just continue your painting. You can be on your phone or whatnot. But just getting that very beginning shot of a time lapse, I think, is important. And just getting like one to two seconds of that time lapse of you just like speedy, filling in a whole big area and then done. And then maybe setting it up when you're towards the middle and maybe you're starting to work on a little bit of detail or you're adding a different color, setting up your time lapse, getting a few shots of that and then taking it down. And then in the end of you finishing up doing the touches, erasing the chalk marks or whatnot, set up your time lapse again and then do it there. So notice the key to this is you don't have to have it set up for the entire duration. And a lot of the times too, people will forget and I, okay, I will forget to set it up and it's halfway through and I'm like, dang it, I forgot to start the time lapse. It doesn't matter. It, it really, really doesn't. Just set it up somewhere in the middle and then set it up somewhere, maybe again in an hour or two, and then again in an hour or two, just for a little bit. And then you, that's it. Just a couple of times. It does not need to be going the whole time. Also, I have figured out on my iPhone, <laughs> if, if I have my headphones in, and I set my time lapse up on my tripod and put it there. I used to not like this because I was like, I want to listen to music and podcasts. That's what gets me through the day. Nowadays, did you know if you set it up on time lapse and then you record it to go and then you pull your screen down and press play, it will continue to play your podcast through your earbuds while it takes a time lapse video game changer because that was always my excuse. That's no, I want to listen to my own music or books or whatever. And so I didn't want to put a time lapse on all day. Now you don't have to. You can put your time lapse and listen to your music at the same time. Freaking brilliant. I love technology. Editing tip for time lapse. If there's a spot on the time lapse where you can't see a big movement or a big space being covered, then cut it out completely. So I actually just saw an artist posting this recently and I just kind of think like, no, don't do that. <laughs> this is how I would make it better. They put the time lapse up and you could see them like running all over and doing stuff, but you couldn't really see exactly what they were doing or that they were being like what was being made. And also they were kind of blocking what was happening. And so it literally just like looked like they were creating art, but you couldn't see what exactly? And it was just kind of a little confusing. If there's anything like that in your time lapse to where you can't clearly see the art, you're blocking it, you can't see there's no big motion being done, like you covering an entire area, just cut it out. It doesn't need to be there. Just save it for the big motions covering big areas or you're doing like tiny details. Those are the big important parts because back in the day, like, and I know that to us, it seems like doing every little brush stroke, like adding the leaves in this area and then adding the highlights up top and adding the final bits to the cloud or whatnot. We think that's important, but the viewer does not care about that. They just don't. They care about the final result. So the faster we can get to the final result while also just relaying that, hey, we are painting this. That's the goal of this. We just want to make videos that are saying, hey, this is a painting that I am doing. Look at me painting it and then look at the final result. And I would say if you could do the painting part <laughs> in like five to 10 seconds and then show the final reveal, I think that is the key to it or shorter. Really, the shorter the video lately, the better. So for Instagram Reels, I think they recently had an announcement saying something like, we, we like short video, nothing really long. And so really that should come to us as a relief because we don't have to spend a ton of time editing a one minute video as opposed to editing a 10 second video. It's a lot easier. We just need to get to the point a lot faster in order to keep the attention of the viewer because they don't want to watch our stuff the whole time unless they're like our number one fans, which is only maybe 1% of our viewing audience, right? But we, we want to get 50% or more of our viewing audience interested in what we're doing by just saying, hey, this is a blank thing before I started, a blank canvas, blank wall. Look what I'm, I'm throwing paint on it. Look, I'm doing a little bit of detail. And then look what I've made out of nothing using paint. 
how cool is this? That's exactly what we're trying to portray and make it as interesting as possible. So big movements and creating in a very short amount of time. Next video idea is to just do one to two second clips. And you know, this isn't rocket science. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen and know how to do a time lapse. And I'm sure you know how to do a one to two second clip video, meaning you <laughs> just have, instead of doing a time lapse, like a bunch of different time lapse videos, just in real time, put your phone on video for five seconds, paint a little section, and then done, and then move on and just paint, 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 and then set your video up again, do five second clip, done, 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 swish, swish, swish with your paintbrush, and then again, and then again, right? The key to this is quick because nobody actually wants you to watch, you know, paint a section of just green with your paintbrush for five seconds, right? I take five second clips and then I edit them down to one to two second clips in InShot in my video editor. Again, it's just to keep people's interest. And I just cringe so much when I see artists just focused in and you can see their paintbrush and you can see their hand and they're painting one section yellow or whatever for like five seconds. And I'm like, get to the point. Like, <laughs> I do not want to watch you do that. I, one second, maybe two seconds are pushing it really. It has to be really interesting for a clip to be three seconds on your video. Okay, just to just to put the the numbers out there. One second, great. Two seconds, pushing it. Three seconds, it has to be something very interesting for you to have a three a whole three second clip on there for somebody not to just scroll past. Because as Dion Wood says, you know, Dion is the person that I'm going to present to today at her retreat with all of her artists that she's gathered. Dion actually first introduced me to the idea of a scroll stopper. You want to make something to where when people are scrolling and scrolling on Instagram, like my husband is the fastest scroller like ever. I'm like, how are you even reading anything? He just goes, goes, goes. I'm like, you're not consuming. Like, there's, there's, there's no way. Like he scrolls way faster than I do. But it takes something really interesting for him to stop, which is typically like a wildlife video for him or like a hunting video or whatever. I would never stop on something like that. But it's something well done and something that maybe has a little bit of suspense and you're like, what are they doing? Like, so creating a scroll stopper, quoted by Dion Woods of the Turquoise Iris. And I remember, so I was in her group in the beginning before the Artist Academy was a thing. I joined her group and I was like, let me see how you run your group because I think I might want to do something like this. And she, and that's when I heard of the, the idea of a scroll stopper. And I realized with her sharing her tips and tricks of how to create a really good photo showing off her furniture art that she tries really hard. And I don't know why I thought that everybody just kind of showed up on Instagram, just shooting a photo and then posting it and just like willy nilly, there you go. But no, like she tries really hard and so much to where she would pose in certain ways with her furniture art. She would completely restage a wall in her own home with flowers and vases and just all these different things around her art and then pose there. And the lighting was great. And she edited it to make the colors pop. And she spent so much time on this one photo to create that scroll stopper. It just clicked in my mind. I was like, oh, wait, trying hard is a good thing. I guess. Because I think back in high school, do you remember when they were like, you're trying so hard or like, to, you know, just to be cool, it should be effortless. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> in the real adult world, the harder you try, the better it's going to turn out typically, right? I mean, we've all posted those videos of like, you know, scraping off paint before and you get like 10,000 views and you're like, what the heck? But in general, I promise, trying hard and really figuring this stuff out is is the key to it. Again, if you want examples of some of my simple time-lapse videos or the one to two second clips, go to artistacademy.co slash video. You can download and you can see 
really, really good examples of my videos that have gotten really, really good views because I tried hard and I put these things together. And it's really not that hard because they're short videos. They're just really short clips. You can see exactly how short they are. You can see what kind of you know, trending sound that I used or whatever. But just to see visual examples with links, artistacademy.co slash video, or just use the link here in the podcast. And if you forgot to record anything the entire time you're painting, no big deal, because the following are ideas for the busy painter, because, I mean, let's just be honest, I don't necessarily want to do a video production every time. I don't. And you don't have to. You really don't. Nowadays, you know, just showing that you're an artist and showing what you've made in a creative, fun way with good lighting and good camera angles is enough. And so my first one... My first tip is a little trick. It's just like the one to two second clip video idea, only you're completely finished with the painting and you do a one to two second clip close up painting, a one to two second clip slightly further away, and then just repeat it by going slightly further away each time until in the end. So say it's a 10 second clip total, you have five video clips of one really close, one slightly further away, further away, further away. And the last one is you posing with your art in some way. Um, again, I have lots of examples of this. This is probably my go-to one because I'll even do time-lapse videos and process videos, and then I'll do another video just like this in the end. So just repeating content and showing this painting in a new way again with this because it's so easy <laughs> and it just works. And so if you also, if you pair it with a trending sound, typically a one second clip video. So if you do one second, one second, one second, one second, or two seconds, two seconds, two seconds, you know what I mean? Typically, if you're consistent with that, it will go with just about any trending sound that you can find. Tip. So when you're editing, make sure when you're editing, you can see the little second mark. Make sure it's actually at one second, one full second or two seconds and just make it consistent and it will go with most trending sounds. Or, I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again, try using the editor cap cut for a very similar effect. So instead of having different sections up close or far away, I'll just film one like seven second video far away and I'll use the video editor cap cut to have like a slow motion up close to far away or far away to up close. It basically is like a zoom effect and all you do is just sit there and pretend to paint for seven seconds and that's it. <laughs> you just put it in cap cut and it zooms for you and it's just so smooth and it works and you pair it with a trending sound. There you go. Easy, right? <laughs> okay, the next one is the canvas turnaround and I'm not even going to focus on this one very much because I'm so annoyed with that this is like a thing. It's literally the easiest thing you could possibly do. Just turn your canvas around. Literally, just you have a finished painting and just just turn the canvas around. Do it slowly. Do it quickly, do it with a smile, do it with some kind of big motion, do it walking towards the camera, make it your own. I see everybody doing this and it works. And so if you haven't tried the canvas turnaround method, just do it because it's the easiest thing. Think of the psychology behind that. I think of this as kind of like an unboxing type thing. People want to see what's on the other side of the wall. People want to see what's inside the box. People want to see that thing. So if you give them, hey, I have this thing I'm about to show you. Just wait a second. Okay, here you go. And then you show them. People will wait for that, typically. Psychologically, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the suspense, the wanting what you can't have type of thing, the, the waiting. I don't know. But think of it in that way, it works. Okay, the next <laughs> the next example is the Instagram husband. <laughs> That's, and you grab your supportive teammates and teach them how to get you the shot that you want. By first, this is what I do with Ryan, my husband. I will show him, okay, on the screen, this is what I want. And I will specifically show him, do not do too much sky. Do not do too much ground. This is about the perfect amount. Also, keep me in it. Sometimes he loves to cut me out of videos. I don't know why. I'm like, hey, I did my hair. Like, I'm right. Don't cut me out. <laughs> and so I show him, keep me in it. I also show him, I'm like, okay, keep my right elbow in it and keep the left side of the canvas in it too. So that way it gives him two 
points. Okay, so that way when he goes to do it himself, he's just seen me position it exactly how I want it, and he'll still mess it up, but he's getting a lot better. <laughs> so just patience. And one time, it makes me feel really bad to even say this, but <sighs> at one time, <laughs> I was very frustrated with him, and we were doing a video that was supposed to be like a promo video. Is getting paid to do one for a brand partnership, and so it was. We were doing a lot of video, and I really needed his help. And I, at the end of it, he was like, "I don't want to do that anymore because you yell at me." I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't yelling, but I was being kind of like, no, not like, no. What are you doing?" Like, so conversations like that do happen. But since he said that, I was like, "Oh, okay." I try to be better about explaining exactly what I want rather than just, you know, giving it to him and having him try to do whatever because he doesn't have that artistic brain. So that is my biggest tip is show them exactly what you want and then let them go. He's gotten a lot better at it, by the way, especially the zoom effect. Now I use CapCut, but before I used to have him, you know, zoom and go right up close to me and then back away. Sometimes even still, I'll give him just like, okay, spend 60 seconds, get a bunch of five second clips of me and just like circle me and go to the right and go over my shoulder and just kind of get a bunch. That way I have 60 seconds of clips that I can cut down to five to 10 seconds because that's how much of it's going to be good and that, that I actually want. So I have him do an over amount and he's really patient with me. And I just tell him, I just need you for five minutes and then you can go back to doing whatever you're doing. But please, and he's typically pretty good about it. Next video idea is The Magician. This is one of my favorites, actually. So this is really hard to do if you're a muralist because you really have to be forward thinking because the idea of it is you have a blank wall and then you have a finished product and that's it. And the blank wall scene should only be maybe two seconds max. Remember my thing of like one second, sure, two seconds is pushing it, three seconds, it's got to be really interesting for somebody not to scroll away from it. So if you're standing in front of a blank wall, you better be doing something or showing that something's about to be there. Or there's got to be words on the, on the screen or something for people to not just scroll past. So the blank wall scene or the blank canvas scene should be two seconds barely more. You have to make it interesting before you either turn the canvas or no. Okay. No, this isn't a turnaround canvas. This is a magic trick. So <laughs> before you either do some kind of big motion, like a jump or a clap, or like sometimes I'll clap over my head. Sometimes I'll do a swipe of the brush. Sometimes I'll jump. Not right now because I'm nine months pregnant and <laughs> that's harder to do at the moment, <laughs> but it's do some kind of big motion and then do it again with your finished product. And this is really easy to do with canvas because you can just keep your camera still the entire time. And I'll just take the blank canvas and take it out of the screen and then take my finished canvas in the screen, jump, and then edit it together. But the key is to be in the exact same position and have the exact same camera angle. Personally, I am a perfectionist when it comes to something like this. I won't post it if it's not exact. And I've done a couple where it's like been really close in the past and I've posted it and I'm like, ugh, it just, it defeats the purpose. A magician is smooth. That's why we watch them. You know, they don't stumble and then not an obvious like, oh, this is a different day that I'm doing this. You know, it's just, it has to be seamless. And those are the, you know, the people who take the time to make it exact and have the exact same camera angles and be in the exact same position. Take a couple tries. There's several times where I do the canvas magic trick and I do several different takes. And I'll actually do several takes right there before I move my camera. I'll put it in my editor and I will clip them together to see. And then sometimes I'll redo it. I'm like, no, it has to be perfect because that's what's going to get you views and shares. And that's what's going to get Instagram followers and make your reels go viral, not half assing it. You just can't. It really, really helps to pay attention to the details when it comes to doing any of these magic tricks. Because if it's if it's obvious that it's a different day, different lighting, different, you're in a different position, it's, don't, no, don't bother. <laughs> that sounds harsh, but just don't bother. It looks like second best. I don't know. Anyway, okay. 
And if you have some extra time doing the voiceover, I just did this one. I just did a watermelon boat and I painted it for a customer, literally a boat painted like a watermelon. And I felt like it needed an explanation because people kept asking me about it. Like, what's the story behind that? So I started off the video. I just had a bunch of different clips, time lapse, just had a bunch of different clips from painting it throughout the last few days. And I did a voiceover saying, the story behind the watermelon boat is this, because that's what everybody kept asking me. They're like, what's the story behind it? And I'm like, well, if people are asking me this, I should probably explain. It didn't do as well for me as it does my short, short videos, but it was still fun. Those ones take a lot longer. And so if you don't have a ton of time, like most of us do, I'd say don't do the voiceovers. Although I have seen it done really, really well. Andrea Nelson She is really good at this. So if you just search Andrea Nelson on Instagram, she is one of the top people that I see that does voiceovers, that does camera to face. She actually has, I interviewed her on the podcast here probably like 15 episodes ago. If you want to just scroll back and read through or listen to her stuff, highly recommended, but it doesn't really work for me, but it can work for some. But I typically stick to the really short form video using a trending sound tip. If you have a, if you're looking for a trending sound, what what I'll do sometimes, and I'm sure this totally messes up my my algorithm on reels, but I'll just, sometimes I'll just tell my husband, I'm like, hey, I've got to watch a couple reels to find a sound really quick. So I'm just, you're just going to hear some music for a bit. He's like, okay. And so I'll just scroll until I find a sound that goes with the video that I'm wanting to do and also has that little arrow button in the left bottom corner. So my friend Taryn, who's in the academy, she's in the, in the artist academy. She's in Alaska. She introduced me to this. I had no idea that this was a thing. You might, but just to share for those who don't, if it's a trending sound, it'll have a little arrow on the bottom left of the reels and then Instagram. And if it's not a trending sound, it'll just have a little music symbol. And what I also like to do is go to the trending sound and then I'll click on it and then I'll save it. And I'll also look to see how many reels have been made during that time. And if it's less than 10,000, then it's an up and coming sound. If it's over 100,000, then it's probably almost played out by now uh, because a lot of people have already used it. So the fewer the number on the reels that have been made on the arrow trending sound, the better. So you can maybe, you know, catch the wave early of the trends and that'll work. But yeah, so I'll just flip, flip through just to find a sound that I like because I really think it matters. And nothing's going to boost your videos more than content, like having really good content with good lighting and making it interesting and having really good art inside of that video is the number one thing. There's no hashtag or anything that's going to make that better, that's going to make that go viral. But if you have really good content paired with the a really good sound, a trending sound, then that's where the magic happens. So taking a little bit of time to go through and find a sound really quick doesn't have to be forever. I take like five minutes to find a sound maybe and then adding it to it and uploading. Okay, <laughs> that is all I have. I have to leave here in 30 minutes to go present at Dion Woods's creativity retreat in Branson. And I'm basically going to give them exactly what I'm giving you here, plus a cloud painting tutorial, plus showing them how exactly I do all my videos, all of these examples in real time, plus editing them. And so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. But if you want to get the same handout that they got, or they're about to get, in uh, just go to artistacademy.co slash video or click the link and you'll see my examples and you'll just have everything written out that way you can refer to it later okay i gotta go get ready have a great week and thanks for listening